Uh, today, you're going to review a skill that I use all the time. So whether I'm doing Algebra 1 or whether I'm doing Calculus 3, this is a skill I use. So I see this as one of the broadest skills that you can learn in math, and uh, we will review it today. Um, and apply it in a little bit more challenging problems maybe you've seen before, and that's how to graph by using X and Y intercepts. And here's how I remember it. So people are wondering, you know, how do you remember this stuff? Um, I always go back to the graph. If I have a graph and it crosses the x-axis, that is the x-intercept, and that is the y-intercept. Are we all okay with that? All right. So these have coordinates. The y-intercept has a coordinate, and the x-intercept has a coordinate. Now. Um, let's focus on the y-intercept. One of these values we don't know, and one of these values we do know. Which one do you know? Zero. Which one is zero? As you notice here, the x value is going to be zero, and then we have a y value. And for the x-intercept, we know that... Yep, you have an x value, and then you have a y value of zero. So in order to determine the x-intercept, set y equal to 0 and solve for x. For the y-intercepts, set x equal to 0 and solve for y. So whenever I come across a function, um, I often look for intercepts right away in order to sketch a quick graph. Uh, you can do that by making a table and, again, just plug in 0 for x and 0 for y, and that will produce the intercepts. That's maybe a quicker way for you to remember what to do. And you can also use it to generate other points. So we're going to try these four examples. We are going to generate these graphs by finding the x and y intercepts. And so I'm going to make a table, x, y. This is x to the first power, so does anybody know what type of shape it should be? It should be a line. So I'm going to plug in 0 for x, and I'll plug in 0 for y. If x is 0, I could just kind of cover it up, right? It just goes away. And I'm left with an equation of negative 4y is 8. So y is negative 2. And for the next one, I cover up the y, and I get 8. Notice how quickly I was able to do that. Most people will take that line, and they'll put it in a slope-intercept form. I won't do that, because I like to save time on my ACT. So I just find those intercepts, and away I go, and I'm done. So I can plot those. I'm going to go 2, 4, 6, 8, 2, 4, 6, 8. I'll plot 0, negative 2. And I'll plot 8, 0. Yep. Now, the directions say to find the x and y intercepts and generate the graph, but also to find one additional table value. Okay, one additional table value. So what that means is I, I plug something in and solve for something else. Okay. So you have some options. Uh, what would you like to plug in for X or Y? Any thoughts? One for what? X or Y? Okay, if you plug in one for X, we can do that. And you get one minus four Y is equal to eight. Yep, there's a drag on my RAM right now. I don't know why. Subtract one, and I get negative four Y is equal to seven. Y is negative 7 fourths. And so sometimes, you know, people get that type of result. They don't know how to interpret it. Uh, the idea is if we have 1, we get a negative 1.75. It looks like that fits. If you're dissatisfied, maybe you try picking a different value. And I want you to just look at it. There should, uh, it should make sense to you. Okay, I have X values between 0 and 8. See that? 
So maybe 4 would be a good value to choose. If I choose x is equal to 4, you would get 4 minus 4y is 8, or negative 4y is 4. So what would y be in that situation? And does it look like 4, negative 1 is a point on my graph? Yes, it does. So that's one thought there. We all good? So graphing lines, it doesn't have to be y equals mx plus b. Okay, you, there's, you, can salt, you can graph line by using x and y intercepts. Pretty straightforward. Um, this is a parabola. As I graph a parabola, I love to find the x and y intercepts right away. That's exactly what I do. Suppose you plug in 0 for x. What do you get for y? You do get negative 8. And if I plug in 0 for y, look at what I get. I get 0 is equal to x squared minus 2x minus 8. Yeah, you get two solutions. Good luck. Have fun. At home tonight, right? Away, where? Parable. Those dirty falcons. Go beat the falcons. So what are your solutions? Positive 4 and negative 2. So in this situation, we come up with more than 1. Okay? More than 1 intercept. I plot negative 8 for the y value. I plot positive 4 for an x value. I plot negative 2 for an x value. So you can see we get a parabola. Now, it's also up to you to start to learn some number sense and some common sense as you're looking at the equation. Notice, if you plug in something for y, how many solutions are you going to get? Two. But if I plug in something for x, I'm going to get one solution. So suppose I want to get another value to see if it's confirmed. What is an x value I could plug in that's between these two? Sure, you can plug in two. We've already plugged in zero to get negative eight. But suppose we plug in two. So if x is two, what is two squared? Minus 4, 0 minus 8, negative 8. Does it seem like 2, negative 8 is also a point on this parabola? Yes, it does. So that confirms my graph. It strengthens my thoughts. I am checking my answers and confirming I'm correct. We good? Now, those are the two most common type of graphs that you guys have come across. What happens when you come across a graph that you are not familiar with? For example, in number 3, what's different about this? Yeah, the y is squared instead of the x. Agreed? So I'll set it up the same way. And understand now we're kind of taking an investigative approach. We're like, well, what happens when this changes? It's kind of exciting. We're on an adventure. What are you bringing on your adventure? All right. X and y intercepts. We plug in 0 for x, we plug in 0 for y. Uh, close. If we plug in 0 for x, we get 0 is equal to 9 minus y squared. Well, how many solutions will we get? We're going to get 2. So we're going to have 2 x is equal to zeros. we got 0 is equal to, and some people have become frustrated by this factoring option. Um, it does matter that the 9 is first. So it's a, the 3 has to go first. So it's 3 minus y and 3 plus y. Some people have asked, can I just switch it? I don't like it like that. No, you can't. Just factor it like that, okay? If you need to factor a negative 1, I suppose. But uh, So your answers are 3 and negative 3. So I got two x-intercepts. We move on to the y-intercepts. Suppose I plug in 0 for y. What do you get for x? You get 9. All right, I'm going to graph this. I'm going to make a 3 by 3 graph. 2, 4, 6, 8. 
nine. Let's go three six nine. 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 And as I plot my points, I have zero three. I have zero negative three. And I have nine zero. What does it make? A sideways parabola. Instead of the parabola going up and down, it goes right and left. You're smart, Aiden. We're not bringing Aiden, but we are going to bring Collins. Okay. <laughs> All right. All right. Okay, so let's determine another point on the graph. If you plug in something for X, how many solutions you get for Y? Two. So let's just plug in something for Y. What is a Y value that you'd like to plug in? We've already plugged in zero for Y. Sure, one would work, two would work, negative one, negative two. That would give us a range between here. So let's plug in one for Y. And if we plug in one for Y, what do we get? Eight. Does it look like one eight could be a point on that graph? Yeah, it sure does. Hi, buddy. It was, I. there was nothing here that I can recall. I'm sorry. Okay. We will miss you. I will post a video for you. Later, Gator. We good? Okay. All right. Last one. What's different about this one? Yeah, both X and Y are squared. So I have X and Y. Let's start by plugging in 0 for X. I plug in 0 for X. My new equation is 4Y squared is equal to 16. So Y squared is equal to 4. So Y is... And, yep, if you see the y squared, that means that there are two solutions, positive 2 and negative 2, so make sure you list both of them. Very common for people on their test to not list both intercepts. I would now like to find the x-intercept, so I can plug in 0 for y. And I get x squared is equal to 16. Positive 4 and negative 4. So you can see that they both have two intercepts. So again, it's a new shape. We've not really graphed this before. Uh, we have uh, positive 2 for y, so I'm going to put a dot there. Negative 2 for y, I'll put a dot there. Positive 4 for x and negative 4 for x. Somebody describe for me the shape. It's an oval or an ellipse. That's the shape that's made. It looks like it really doesn't matter what we plug in. If we plug in something for x, we get two values for y. If we plug in something for y, we get two values for x. Now, notice that the x values don't go any further out than negative 4 and positive 4, and the y values don't go any further than positive 2 or negative 2. So you've got to choose something between those. So you want to choose one for what? x or y? Okay, if you want to choose 1 for x, so x is 1, then we get 1 plus 4y squared is 16, or 4y squared is equal to 15. y squared is equal to 15 fourths. So y is equal to plus or minus the root of 15 over 2. So you can see we get two solutions, plus or minus the root of 15 over 2. And you all know that the square root of 15 is 3.9, right? And when we divide that by 2, you get 1.95. So if x is 1, does it seem reasonable that the y value can be 1.95? Or negative 1.95? See how it gets both those spots? So that does seem reasonable. Okay, you can flip to your homework. Tomorrow we would like to do symmetry. However, your homework sheet, I put the symmetry first and the x and y intercept second. So you want to look for 
intercepts and symmetry. Yes. So right here, you see if you open to 1.8 x-intercepts and symmetry, it says test the following for symmetry. That's what we're doing tomorrow. So you flip it over, you can do the other side. That's the x and y-intercepts. You have 19 minutes. Can we sketch a graph for these two or just one? If you'd like to put them each on one graph, that's fine. 